Hi, I'm Smithtown Town Councilman Kevin Malloy. You're watching Historic Smithtown. Enjoy the program. Hi, welcome to Historic Smithtown. I'm Patrick Google, an intern from Smithtown Government Television. I'm standing at the property located by Mills Pond Road and North Country Road in St. James. The name of the property, Flower Field. And while most people associate this place with a beautiful catering hall, it is much more than that. To begin our story, let's go back to the year of 1909 to visit a little town in Queens. John Lewis Childs came to Queens from his hometown in Maine in 1874 to take a job in horticulture with C.L. Allen. Over the next few years, he began renting, then buying land in East Hinsdale, Queens, near other nurseries. He formed his own bulb and seed company in 1875 and began acquiring land around the post office and train station, renaming the area Floral Park. In 1899, the county of Nassau was formed with Floral Park becoming a part of it formally incorporating as the village of Floral Park on October 15, 1908. In 1909, he bought 1,000 acres of property in St. James to expand America's first seed catalog business. He named this property Flowerfield. During the height of its popularity, Childs' operations rivaled that of W. Atlee Burpee, with a worldwide circulation of over half a million at up to 8,000 orders a day. In 1910, the Long Island Railroad built a station on the property so Childs could transport his plants to outside markets and as a way for people in New York City to come out to Flowerfield for the day to purchase their flowers and bulbs. Railroad service lasted until the 1940s and the station was raised in 1959. After Childs' death in 1921, his wife Caroline Goldsmith Childs took over the business and continued to operate it until the Great Depression where she sold the catalog seed business to the Bromfield Seed Company. In the mid-1930s, Childs sold 400 acres to Ward Melville, who in the early 1950s donated the entire tract of land with cash to the state of New York for the construction of Stony Brook University. In 1937, the core of the remaining flower fields property was passed to James D. Moody, who was a high-ranking executive at General Motors. For the next 14 years, Mooney and his second wife formed and ran the Flowerfield Bulb Farm. In 1951, Mooney sold 500 acres of the Flowerfield Bulb Farm to the Gyrodon Corporation of America, which was founded by Mr. Peter J. Papadakis, a longtime resident of St. James. Gyrodon at the time was a major defense contractor on Long Island during the Cold and Vietnam Wars. They specialized in the design, testing, production, and development of coaxial helicopters, primarily for the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. Over the next 12 years, they went from a company with just 50 part-time employees to over 700 employees worldwide by 1963. The coaxial helicopter was first designed and developed by the Bendix Helicopter Company based in Massapequa. Upon filing for bankruptcy, Mr. Papadakis bought the company and continued the coaxial helicopter's production. Mr. Papadakis believed his helicopter system was less complex, more power efficient, and lighter and safer than other helicopter designs at that time. Between 1949 and 1951, the Air Force test flew the 2B model and were impressed enough to fund further development. The next project design was the Gyrodyne 2C, which was a six-seater making it the largest helicopter ever built on Long Island. It was the 2C design and testing that ultimately led to the design of the Exron Cycle. The Exron Cycle was designed as a small-sized helicopter that could be dropped to a stranded pilot behind enemy lines. The pilot could quickly snap together the helicopter and fly out of harm's way. The Navy liked the concept, but wanted an unmanned remote radio-controlled helicopter that could carry bombs and torpedoes and cut down on human casualties. This led Gyrodyne to the final development of the QH-50 drone helicopter, which was one of the first drone anti-submarine helicopters, or DASH for short. 
On August 12, 1960, at its Navy flight testing facility in Maryland, the Navy tested the QH-50. This is notable because it was the first remote-controlled helicopter flight in the world. The success of this design led the U.S. Navy to contract for the production of 750 between 1960 and 1968. The beauty of the Dash line of helicopters was they were an unmanned weapon of deterrence, mostly towards enemy submarines that were launched off destroyers. The U.S. Navy deployed the system in destroyers around the world, with the system seeing service during the conflict in Southeast Asia. In January 1965, the U.S. Navy explored using the QH-50 model CND as reconnaissance platform by fitting video and film cameras to the aircraft as part of Project Snoopy, a telemetry system to allow remote operators to monitor their actions and a transponder to track location were also installed. QH-50s modified under Project Snoopy were used for missions like spotting for naval gunfire support. Throughout the late 1960s and early 1970s, the demand for the drone helicopters started to diminish mainly because the Navy's ship count was decreasing, but the ship size itself was increasing. What that means is that larger deck sizes were able to accommodate larger concept helicopters, making the drone line almost obsolete. Mr. Papadakis had predicted that there would be a change in production and demand and had positioned the company to continue with less defense contract work. On June 14, 1966, he formed the Flowerfield Properties wholly owned subsidiary of the Jaradun Company for the purpose of holding certain assets of the company's property. By 1972, he was remodeling the now empty manufacturing facilities in St. James and converting them into small size suites in order to turn the property into an industrial park. Today, Jaradun and its subsidiaries concentrate on their efforts for the operation and development of its real estate holdings in St. James. Five former Jaradun buildings have over 130,000 square feet of rentable space. This industrial and commercial space is leased to about 50 tenants for office, manufacturing, engineering, and warehouse use. The Flowerfield site as it existed under Mooney and Jaradun's ownership was split in half by the Port Jefferson line of the Long Island Railroad. The acreage on the east side of the tracks was taken through eminent domain by Stony Brook University in 2005 and have since built an advanced energy and technology center on the site. The west side of the property was where Mr. Papadakis hosted catered events and retreats for high-ranking military officials. That residence has now evolved into the Flowerfield Celebrations Catering Hall, whereas the original building had an indoor swimming pool and a tent where the main receptions were held they have since made the pool into an indoor pond and built a new building where the receptions are now held. The catering hall is located on 15 acres which has vineyards and manicured gardens and an outdoor pond and fountain. As you've seen, the flower field complex has a very diverse history. From a flower farm in the early 1900s and then later to a defense contractor to catering hall and industrial park. We hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Thank you for watching. For Historic Smithtown, I'm Patrick Google.